Welcome to the LA Story Podcast with Stevie Wilson. Hey people, this is Stevie for the LA Story. And I have somebody new and different to talk to today and about a totally off-the-wall topic for me. And actually, it's kind of a good thing because this is financial expert Carmen Juan Wong Ulrich, who's going to talk to us about how to get your finances in order no matter what age range you are, from college to retirement, college expenses, saving for kids, changing, you know, maybe you lose your job, you know, what to do. Carmen, it's so hard out there. What's a person to do? It, it, Stevie, it, it is hard, but you also have to realize that no matter what age you are, no matter what stage of life you are, you may not have a lot of control over what's coming in in terms of money, but you have so much control over what's going out and how you spend it and where you put it. So always realize that you are in control of that and that is a seat of power. Don't feel powerless about it. Cool. At least we know we can... Actually, you can't. You're right. We can control how we spend our money. How you spend it and where you put it. And that's really important, too, because it's not just what's going out in terms of the bills, but it's what financial tools are you using to take advantage of to maintain your quality of life, to make your life better, to save for the future, to protect what you have. you got to think about all of those things as well, and you are in control when it comes to all that. Okay, so what kind of tools are we talking about? Well, we're talking about especially, you know, your emergency savings fund, saving fund. I call this, you know, the first line of defense. And you mentioned job loss. And this is very important to realize that in this new economic reality that we're in, that we're going to see high in unemployment for a while. We're going to see more turnover in terms of jobs and having a job and having different jobs through your life going forward. So you've got to make sure that you have that ample cash savings set aside to protect you should you lose your job. And one of those tools, for example, is an automated savings account. And this is a lot of banks offer this for free, separate from your checking account, even a separate bank if, if you just can't handle having it that close and you may dip into it. You don't want to dip into it. So have it automatically taken out of your checking account and socked away so you don't use it. That's a great idea. Even to the point of finding a different bank. Yes, even to that point. I've talked to a lot of folks recently and they say, you know what, if I do it with my own bank and you bank online, it's very easy to move that money around. So if it's too easy for you to do that, have it completely at a separate bank that you cannot or, or that it's difficult, let's put it this way, to move the money over. And it may even take 24 hours and that's enough time for you to really think about what you're doing. Okay. Would you recommend credit unions as as opposed to banks? Absolutely. I wouldn't say as opposed to. I would say in addition to. Credit okay. unions and community banks can be great resources because they offer great low competitive rates when it comes to borrowing, and they offer sometimes more when it comes to earning interest on your savings. Some credit unions and community banks, however, don't have, for example, the online resources that big banks have, but I recommend that you shop around and see what's best for you. You can go to a free site like bankrate.com and shop there and see what bank in your area offers what you need. Match your bank with your behavior. And it, I like to do things online, so I do it with this bank. So match that too, as well as looking at prices. Okay. And that's really interesting because when you're thinking about that, if you need that added level of having a credit union, which I'm a member of three different credit unions and they're difficult to get to, that that's actually where I put my savings. <laughs> well, that can be good because I bet they offer a great interest rates. They do. And it's, it's nice that in case you need an emergency, something, you know, you, you maybe, you know, blew out a tire or have a real emergency where you right. got to replace a water heater or something. Right. You can go in and, and get a signature loan, but it's, it's nice because it's, it is a community kind of thing where you're a member and it's not all about them making money off of you through fees and all that stuff. But when you're looking at creating a financial strategy, and this should start when even somebody is in their 20s when they're, you know, graduating from college and they're looking at all those college loans and everything they have to pay back. And it's important to start this, isn't it? It's really important to start this, and it's really important, especially at that age you mentioned, to manage your credit the right way. And it can be very, very hard because, for example, a lot of 20-something, especially college grads, are seeing themselves laden down with a lot of student loans, some credit card debt, 
but they don't necessarily have the income to take care of those things. So what you want to do if you find yourself in that situation, contact the lender. Be proactive about it so you can keep your loan in good standing. Because your 20s is a great time to build credit, a great credit history, which is going to serve you well down the road, for example, in your 30s when you're looking to buy a home or even earlier than that. So things are going to cost you less as you get older. Credit is so important and vital to take care of in your 20s. Talk to your lender if you can't manage those loans. They have different plans, especially if you have a federal loan, like an income-based repayment plan, forbearance, or deferment. Okay. What's the one age group or one thing that key thing that people should, generally speaking, think about Besides having an emergency fund, what's the next step that they should do? Listen, the next thing to do in terms of protecting your bottom line and protecting your family, especially if you have folks that depend on your income, like your children or your spouse or even aging parents, you've got to make sure that you have ample insurance coverage. Now, Prudential did a survey and they found that two-thirds of Americans say that, you know what, the recession made me realize that I need to look and reassess my insurance coverage, but less than a quarter of Americans have actually done that. And we need to make sure that we have coverage, not just with your employer, I'm talking about life insurance coverage and disability, but actually individual coverage, coverage on your own. So should you lose your job, you don't go one day without life insurance coverage, which you need to protect you through your working years. Absolutely. And actually, I hadn't thought about that. Mm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, yee. But, but this is good. And, and the numbers are encouraging there, too, in terms of what folks are doing right. More folks are looking into getting insurance coverage individually separate from their employer. Because the reality is, is that more and more employers, not only are we seeing the employment numbers not so great, but we're also seeing them not offering those benefits. So you need to make sure that you have these things that can cover those gaps and protect the people that depend on you. Okay, and where would somebody go to look for life insurance? At, at like, and also, too, maybe if they, particularly if they've lost a job or looking at looming layoff. Yeah, particularly I, here, here in California with the budget crisis we have, there's so many different people that are sitting there thinking, oh, they got notices, they might be getting a pink slip, start getting health insurance now. Yeah, and that's the thing, especially if you're, you're younger and you're healthy to cover your working years, it's a great time to look, especially into term coverage, which can be low cost if you're really concerned about the cost of insurance. And you go to sites like aggregate shopping sites like eSurance.com. A lot of providers have a lot of information on their websites as well. But here's the thing, educate yourself about what the policies are, the benefits they have for you, and make sure that you have enough coverage. I find a lot of folks that even if they have coverage through their employer for years and years, they hit their 40s and 50s and they realize they've never looked back and raised their coverage to go along with their salary and all the new demands on their money. So look at your coverage, even if you had it for years, and reassess. Do you have at least a minimum of three times your annual salary in there? Do you have separate individual coverage? Look at that and fix that if you can today. It really protects the people that you love and also, you know, it'll pay outstanding debts. It'll leave a legacy for you. It just takes care of things. Wow. Yeah. Great ideas. Great information, too. Thanks, Steve. If they want to get more information from you or find out more topics that they need to look at, more, you know, basically re getting their financial house sure. in order. Sure. I, I have a new book that came out, The Real Cost of Living, and you can go to therealcostof.com to find out more information about it there. And listen, here's the thing. The, today, if you can take care, control of your situation and your finances today, then it's never too late to start. I love it. Such a great idea. People, go check, first off, go buy Carmen's book. <laughs> this, is, this is like a no-brainer. And if you have a Kindle, just download the darn thing. Um, hopefully she's available on oh, there. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> See, now it even makes it easier. And start doing the financial, you know, looking at what, getting your house in order. Because if you don't, if something happens, you get sick or your parents get hurt or if you've got children something happens you can never be too sure of what's going tomorrow happen tomorrow it's this is just really imperative as my parents get older it's really scary and you sit there and go oh my gosh there's nothing that I know I don't even know I don't even know and you can't even ask them because they get all freaked out they really do. It's a so. tough conversation, but if you can, Steve, I really recommend it. I know it's a hard conversation. I know I've had to have it too. 
but really if you have aging parents and especially if you have kids too that depend on you for college, sit down and have those tough conversations because it's so worthwhile, and not just to protect you and your finances because you may have to take care of them, but to really protect them and enable them to really maintain a certain quality of life. It's to their advantage to sit and talk with you, and I know it's a real icky topic, but make it a loving one and make it about family and protecting each other, and hopefully you can have that conversation soon. Yeah, absolutely, and, and you're right, too, because it's just sometimes it's not that I don't want to. It's they don't. They, w they want to avoid the topic. Oh, yes, I've encountered that. Because they get that. scared. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they, or they are so private that it's like, why, are you expecting me to die? Well, don't don't we all though, Steve? <laughs> We're all going to at some point. So <laughs> it's it, it is it's one of those things. It's 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 hard to talk about, but I you know, and I've had to have these conversations with different levels of resistance. Uh, you really should understand that if you can help your parents, even if they're afraid of it, to talk about it so that they will be okay and so that you will be okay. It's an important conversation to have. Well, it's just better to have the information and know where everything is and that it's set up properly now until they're in the hospital or something, you know, dire is happening. Exactly. It's, it's important to do that before that happens. Absolutely. Love it. People, go check out Carmen's website. She's, I, I, as you can tell, I'm like so into this. This is like <laughs> one of those topics that I actually Good. like to talk about. Good. So... Thank you, Carmen, for your time today. And people, this is Stevie for the LA Story saying see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining Stevie Wilson on LA Story. Feel free to check out other podcasts and videos. Bookmark it now. www.la-story.com.